Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. In this video, I'm going to show you how to separate out control of a character so that you can switch back and forth between a player controlling the character and an AI controlling the character. We'll build a really simple demo of how you can do this and hopefully you get an idea of how to build this into a bigger system. So let me just show real quick what I'm talking about and then I'll dive into how it's done. So here I am playing and all of these characters, they're just picking a random spot on this nav mesh here and just moving to it. Once they get there, they pick a new spot. But if I hit space, you see they turn green and all of a sudden I have control over him. So now I'm controlling this character. He's not trying to move on his own. And if I hit space again, he goes back and the next character comes under my control. I can hit space again and take this guy and basically just cycle through them. So I can go through and control and release control of a character pretty easily and the code is nice and simple too. So I'm going to show you how that's done. So let's stop playing. And uh, first let's take a real quick look at the scene. So in the scene I just have three of these characters and then I have a character control swapper which just has a script on there that lets me swap between the characters. The plane is just a plane with a nav mesh set on there and a baked nav mesh. And then the characters have a couple of things. The character controller doesn't really matter. The thing that matters here, there's nav mesh agent and this character script. And the character script, let's take a look at it. Oh, we can delete this extra using statement. We don't need that. And this extra line. May as well clean things up while we're in here. So if you look right here, you'll see it doesn't do a whole lot. There's a character brain reference here. So we have a private character brain. And then in the start method, we call a method that just says use AI brain. The update just takes whatever brain we have and calls a tick method on it. So it's essentially like running an update on these brains. But since they're not mono behaviors, they don't have an update. So we need to call something else to force them to update. So we just have a method on here called tick. I'll show you that in a second. And then let's look at the two methods down here. So these are internal is the same as public. I'll just make them public to make it a little bit more obvious. But um, what we have here is use AI brain and when I say the same, they're slightly different, but not in unity. So, okay, back to the brains. The use AI brain, as you can see, just sets the brain to a new AI brain. And in the constructor, we pass in the nav mesh agent. The, play, the use player brain method does almost the same thing, except instead of creating an AI brain, it creates a player brain. And these both work as a character brain because character brain is an abstract class. Let's take a look at it real quick. So here you can see we have the abstract keyword, just means that this class itself can't be instantiated. So you can't have something that says brain equals new character brain. That'll actually give you a compiler error and tell you you can't instantiate an abstract class. So that just means, and I'll show you in a second how that works, but we're gonna, the other two classes are gonna use this as their base class. But let's take a look here. We have one protected field. So protected just means that any class that inherits from it can access it, but it's not public. It's right in between private and public. And we have this character brain constructor that takes in a nav mesh agent, which makes sense because we passed in a nav mesh agent. And it just caches the nav mesh agent here. So we don't have access to anything on the mono behavior or the, the game object level, just because this isn't a game object mono behavior, it's just a regular old class. So we need to pass something in. And the nav mesh agent may not be the ideal thing to pass in. But for now, since it's a basic demo, it's the only thing I'm passing in. So we cache nav mesh agent here, and then we just set the destination to its current position. This was just to stop it. it. Doesn't do anything else. And then notice down here though, we have on line 13, public abstract void tick. So this just means that any class that implements this as the base class needs to have an implementation for the tick method. So let's take a look real quick at some of those implementations. So if I go back to the character, we had to use AI brain and that creates a new AI brain passing in the nav mesh agent. And let's jump into that one and see what it looks like. So first you'll see the base class is character brain, which makes sense since we want these all to be brains. We want them all to work exactly the same. They should be interchangeable. So. It also needs to have a constructor like this though because it needs to be able to pass in the nav mesh agent to the base class. So we need to have a, a constructor here that takes in a nav mesh agent and then calls the base classes constructor right here and passing that nav mesh agent in. 
and this is actually auto generated if I didn't have this watch let me delete this line cut it real quick so I can repaste it but if I go in here and I just hit control period you'll see it actually offers to generate the constructor for me right there because it knows that that's what I need for this abstract class then here we have public override void tick so this is the implementation of that tick method from the abstract class that has to be done and this is getting called on the character every time it updates so if the character is using an AI brain it's gonna do whatever's in this tick method and right here what it's doing is checking to see if we don't have a path or the path status is not complete so if it's an invalid path or partial path or there's just no path then what we do is just get a random position and then set the destination to that position and the get random position is really just picking a random offset that's within five meters each direction on the X and Z and then adding that to the current position so if it finds something cool if it doesn't it's gonna be invalid and then the next tick it'll just find something again until it finds something valid again it's not optimal or ideal you want to have some more intelligence here but I don't want to clutter up this demo with things that aren't super relevant to what we're showing. But now I want to go back into the character and let's take a look at this one. So use player brain. If I go in here, you see this again inherits from character brain, has a constructor just like character brain did where we have to pass through the nav mesh. And I, I kind of glossed over this on the other one, but one thing I'm doing is setting the renderer's material color to green if it's player controlled and uh, white if it's not and that's just so you can visualize and see when a player is controlling it and when it's AI controlled and you can kind of tell when you're controlling it again you probably want to pass in something other than the nav mesh agent here that has a, a little bit more info about the things and has access to the objects that you really care about but for now it doesn't really matter this is just so you can see it but let's jump over to the tick so the reason these behave differently is because they have different implementations in their tick method so this one, instead of picking a random position if there's no path, it just waits for mouse button down. So if you click the left mouse button, we do a ray cast using the camera main screen point to ray. This just shoots a ray from your screen point click down to whatever's in the scene. And it's going to tell us if we hit something. So I'm not even checking against layers. So if we click on anything at all, it's going to try to set the destination of the nav mesh to the thing that we clicked on. So when we click on the ground, it's trying to move the object to the ground. So there's one more thing that you need to see, and that's the character control swapper. So like I said before, we're swapping out control of the character with this script. And it's just a game object with nothing else on it but this component. And the way it works is we have an array of characters, which in a wake we just fill with all of the characters in the scene. And then we have an integer for the character index, which is just going to be which character we're controlling out of these. In the update method, we check to see if they've pressed the space key. If they have, we call select next character. And the first thing we do is take the current character. So imagine this is the first character. We're going to take character index zero, and we're just going to tell it to use AI brain. It may already be using the AI brain, and if it is, what's going to happen is it's going to clear out its current path and then just pick a new path. Not a huge deal. Uh, if it's using a player brain, though, it's going to destroy that player brain and replace it with an, a new AI brain, and it'll become AI controlled again. But then we increment the character index. So the first time it'll happen, this will be zero. It'll go to use AI brain. Character index one will get this use player brain called on it, which is just going to swap the brain implementation so that it's now player controlled. And that's kind of all there is to it. Like I said, you can build a much more complex system. But the key thing here is to separate out your logic so that there's not a lot of logic in a big specific class. Imagine if we had all of this logic just in the character class itself or in a generic character brain that was run for everything. We'd run into a lot of problems trying to split this out. You'd have, you know, end up with a bunch of if checks like if this is play player controlled or if this is controlled by AI, do this. And you'd have a bunch of branching and it could turn into a big mess quickly and kind of become a real pain to maintain. So if you can split out your control logic from everything else in a similar fashion, eventually you probably want to build out an entire state machine for your AI system, which isn't really too complicated. I have a post on it on the site at unity3d.college if you want to check that out. 
but a state machine would be good for your AI and then separating out just the controls from the actions themselves is another great thing to do. And we didn't do a whole lot of that here, but in a bigger project, I'd recommend that you do that too. Just totally separate it out controls versus logic and rendering and everything else. Have all of those pieces interchangeable so you can swap them as you need them. And I think that hopefully gives a good overview of how you do this. If you have more questions about it though, please feel free to just drop a comment below or hit me up on the website at unity3d.college. All right, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and hit subscribe. See you later.